بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this clip, we're going to use the different steps and techniques that we've gone over previously and put them together to use one possible scenario that you might run across in real life. Sir, sir, can you hear me? Sir, can you hear me? No response. Call 911. I'm going to open the airway. Look, listen, and feel for 10 seconds. I don't see or feel any breathing. I'm going to go ahead and give a ventilation now. And I have adequate chest rise. I'll give a second ventilation. Again, adequate chest rise. I'm going to go ahead and assess for a carotid pulse for 5 to 10 seconds. No pulse. I'm going to now begin CPR. I want to make sure that I move my patient to a hard surface. Still maintaining my airway. Find my one third. I just completed two cycles of my ratio of 30 to 2 compressions. You want to do approximately four of those, which will take about two minutes. At the end of that, I now want to reassess my patient. I don't need to check for responsiveness because I tell my patient has no change in it. I do, though, want to look, listen, and feel. Still no response. Didn't get my first ventilation in. I want to make sure I reposition the head. Two adequate ventilations. Assess for a pulse. If still no pulse, I would continue CPR and wait for EMS to arrive. If there was a pulse, it's safe to say that you should give another round of CPR for at least two more minutes just to kind of help the heart. It's just been restarted and it could use your help kind of assisting it while pumping. If the patient does at any point wake up though, it's safe to say that you can stop your CPR. Imagine you're at the mall and someone collapses. Fortunately, you can increase or even triple that person's chance of survival if you start CPR. Mayo Clinic doctors say that a modified form of CPR will save more lives. It's easier to learn, easier to do, and you don't have to blow in someone's mouth. Mr. Jones, are you okay? Are you okay? Dr. Tyler Vetabancourt and his colleague Dr. Bentley Bobro are using this mannequin to demonstrate an updated version of CPR called continuous chest compression CPR. The goal is to generate blood flow to the heart and the brain. 
When a person collapses, there's still enough oxygen in their blood to keep them alive for about 10 minutes, but only if that blood gets to the brain. Chest compressions build up the pressure that keeps blood flowing to the heart and brain. If you stop pumping the chest for any reason, the patient's blood flow stops too. Continuous chest compression CPR keeps the oxygen-rich blood flowing. The key is to circulate that oxygen. The way to do that is to continuously push hard and fast on the chest. Without stopping to breathe for the patient. This makes the process easier to learn, remember, and to do. No need to count compressions or breaths, and no need for mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. So if you're out in public or at the office and someone collapses, dial 911. Call 911. Then rub their chest hard to see if they wake up. Don't waste time checking for a pulse. Start pumping. Put one hand uh, over the sternum, the second hand on top of it. Remember that you need to push hard approximately two inches, 100 per minute, and you want to not stop until emergency medical services or the paramedics arrive. No need to worry about hurting the person. This person's dead. If you do nothing, they're dead. All you can do is help them. Doctors Bobro and Vetabankor have teamed up to train the public about continuous chest compression CPR. Their goal is to save people from cardiac arrest in their communities. Continuous chest compression is ideal for adults. It is not for children under 8 or the rare case of respiratory failure or drowning. For these people, standard CPR remains the best option. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين